Hello everyone, I am Dr. Neeraj and today I will discuss about polymerase chain reaction or PCR. So without any delay, let's start the video. Firstly, what is PCR? So PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction and it is a technique which is used to amplify the DNA fragment means this technique or by using this technique you can make many copies of a single DNA fragment if you have very low amount of DNA so you can amplify your DNA by using this PCR technique and this polymerase chain reaction technique was invented by Kerry Mullis in 1984. What are the different steps of this polymerase chain reaction? So it involves three steps. First is the denaturation. So this is the target DNA which is double stranded. So this is that DNA which you want to amplify. So during the first step which is the denaturation, so temperature rises up to 94 to 96 degree centigrade. So at this temperature, the hydrogen bonds, they get broken up and due to the breakage of hydrogen bonds, these two strands, they get separated from each other. Now, in the next step, which is the annealing, so now the temperature is lowered to 50 to 55 degree centigrade and at this temperature, the primer, they will anneal themselves to these strands. These primers are short oligonucleotides which are required for the synthesis of DNA because we know that DNA polymerase, it cannot initiate the DNA synthesis at random point. It requires some primer. So that's why we add primer to this polymerase chain reaction technique. So the polymerase can now extend these primers and multiply your DNA. Now the next step is the extension which is usually done at the 72 degree centigrade in the case of TARC polymerase. This is the thermostable DNA polymerase enzyme which is used in the polymerase chain reaction. So now at this temperature this enzyme TARC polymerase it will extend these primers and make the new strands means these primers are now extended by this TARC polymerase enzyme and now you can clearly see that you have two DNA molecules from the beginning we have just one DNA molecule but at the end of one cycle of this PCR you have two molecules of DNA fragments so by this way the DNA it can be amplified millions of the time by repeating all these three steps that is denaturation, annealing and extension. So the one PCR cycle it is constituted of these three steps. First is the denaturation, then annealing and third is the extension. The PCR cycle consists of these three steps. Now if we draw the temperature versus time means the temperature profile of PCR. So here you can see that we start with a double stranded DNA now. As the first step is the denaturation, so the temperature increases up to 94 to 96 degree centigrade. And at this temperature, denaturation happens. So thus, these two DNA strands, they now get separated out from each other. Now, the temperature is lower down because the next step is the annealing. So temperature is lower down to 50 to 55 degree centigrade. At this temperature, the primer anneal themselves to these DNA strands. So here this light purple color strand it represent the primers. As the next step is the extension which is usually done at the 72 degree centigrade. So temperature again rises to 72 degree and at this temperature DNA polymerase it just extend these primers and make a complete double stranded DNA. So now you can clearly see from one double stranded DNA molecule at the end of one cycle we have two double stranded DNA molecules. So this is the temperature profile of PCR that how temperature and there is a time variation is how the temperature varies with time. Now let's discuss the different components of PCR. So first is the thermal cycler which is the PCR machine. So it is a machine in which all these PCR uh, temperature ups and downs has been performed. So this is a uh, machine in which PCR carried out and other components are like first is the DNA sample. So usually you need DNA sample it is that DNA which you want to amplify. Next primer 
so primers are short oligonucleotides which are required because dna polymerase it cannot start the dna polymerization randomly it require primer so that's why we need primer in the pcr next requirement is the polynucleotides or nucleotides so as we know the dna consists of four bases adenine guanine cytosine thymidine so all these nucleotides they are required in the polymerase chain reaction the next component is tag polymerase this is the enzyme which finally extend the dna or elongate the dna molecule and it is the tag polymerase why because it is extracted from the bacteria that is thermus aquaticus and it is a thermal stable means this enzyme it do not degrade or do not denature with high temperature it is thermostable enzyme because as we know during the polymerase chain reaction temperature rises up to 94 to 96 degree centigrade during the denaturation step so the normal dna polymerase will denature at this temperature but this tag polymerase can withstand this much high temperature that's why we, we use the tag polymerase in pcr and it works at the 72 degree centigrade next we also need the buffer because all the this all this technique it is deal with the dna and enzyme so that's why we need the we need the and buffer to make the ph and just to provide the environment so that our dna sample should not get degraded and the pcr to ultimately we need a tube in which all these components are poured and the technique is carried out now how this pcr performed practically so what we did first we take the pcr tube and we take pcr buffer in this tube now we take the dna sample this is that dna which we want to amplify and pour this dna sample into the pcr tube now the next component which is required is the primer so in the next step the primers they are taken up and just poured into the pcr tube now next we also add dntps that is deoxynucleotide triphosphate so all these dntps that is adenine guanine cytosine thymidine so they are added to the pcr tube at a at fixed concentration and as these are required for the dna synthesis so all of these adenine guanine cytosine thymidine will be added to the pcr tube in the next step we add the enzyme that is tag polymerase or tag dna polymerase this is the enzyme which finally extend or polymerize the dna it is thermostable enzyme as i told it work at the 72 degree centigrade now all these components these are packed in the tube and finally this tube is placed into the this pcr machine or thermal cycler now rest of the work will be done by this pcr machine now once the pcr has been done how we can verify the pcr product so for this we just carried out the agrose gel electrophoresis so this is a technique in which the dna it gets separated out on the basis of their size so we perform the agrose gel electrophoresis of this pcr product and by visualizing the dna bands we can verify our pcr product if there is no band so we can say that there was some fault during the pcr procedure so that's why bands are missing or there may be some other reason that so ultimately it indicate that pcr was failed so by doing agrose gel electrophoresis we can verify the pcr product we can also determine the size of pcr product if we run the dna ladder along with our sample what is dna ladder dna ladder it is consist of the dna fragments of various size and when our product it electrophorized and they will move and stop at a specific position now the position of our band and the dna ladder is compared and we can conclude that the position at which our dna fragment stopped it is similar to that position at which the dna fragment of dna ladder stopped and we can compare the size like here we have for example three dna fragments so first two dna fragments they stopped at the 700 kb so we can deduct that the size of these two dna fragment is also 700 kb while in case of this third band which stopped at 500 kb so we can also say that the size of this fragment is also 500 kb so by just comparing 
the position of our DNA fragments with the DNA ladder, we can also determine the size of PCR products. Now, how we can calculate the number of copies means how we can say that how much DNA has been uh, amplified or how many copies of DNA has been formed. So, for this, there is a formula that is 2 raised to power n, where n represent the number of cycle. So, for example, this is the one DNA molecule from where we start the PCR and after the first PCR cycle, this one DNA molecule will be converted into two DNA molecule. Now, after the second cycle of this polymerase chain reaction, these two DNA fragments, they are now converted into four DNA fragments. As in front of you, one will be changed into two DNA fragments and these two will be changed into four DNA fragments and similarly these four in the next round of PCR cycle that is in the third cycle. So, these four will ultimately converted into the eight DNA fragments and these eight DNA fragments they can now further be converted. So, if you use the formula that is 2 raised to power n. So, at this point means after third cycle we can apply the formula as 2 raised to power 3 which means that is 2 into 2 into 2 which ultimately comes out to be 8. So, here you can clearly see that after third cycle you have 8 DNA molecule and same can be concluded from this formula. Now, you can again check that after fourth cycle so all these 8 molecule means one molecule will make 2 DNA fragments. So, all these 8 molecule will ultimately make 16 DNA molecules. So, which can also be concluded by the formula like 2 raised to power n. So, n is the number of cycle which is 4 here because we are on the fourth cycle. So, n is 4 and if you apply this in the formula, so 2 raised to power 4 which also means that 2 multiplied by 2 which is again multiplied by 2 and which is finally multiplied by 2 means 2 multiplied by 2 4 times which ultimately give rise to the answer that is 16. So, by this formula we also get our answer 16 and you can clearly see that after the fourth cycle you will get 16 molecules. So, by using this formula you can calculate that how many copies of DNA fragment formed after the n number of cycles. So, just you have to put the number of cycle at the place of n and ultimately you will get your answer. Now, let us discuss that what are the factors that affect the PCR amplification. So, the first factor is the buffer composition. So, definitely we are using buffer so its composition will definitely affect the PCR amplification or DNA amplification because we use buffer like we use Tris HCl which is generally used in the 10 to 15 millimolar of and have the pH 8.3. We also use KCl and magnesium chloride primers are also used, DNTV is also used. So, all these components they somehow affect or their concentration somehow affect the DNA amplification. The next factor that affect the amplification that is nucleotide concentration. So, we use all these nucleotide adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymidine. So, their concentration definitely affect the PCR amplification. Generally, their concentration should not exceed 50 micromole for each base. The next component is a primer annealing temperature. So, definitely we use annealing temperature just to anneal the primer with the DNA strand. So, this temperature will definitely affect any variation or any change in this temperature ultimately affect the DNA amplification. The next factor is the choice of polymerase means the polymerase enzyme which you use for the PCR definitely affect the PCR amplification. Like for example, if you use the polymerase which have high error rate. So, after the PCR amplification you will get the amplified DNA but that amplified DNA will definitely contain many errors. So, if you use uh, you can say use the thermal stable and less error proof DNA polymerase. So, then you will get a more appropriate PCR or DNA product. So, these are the steps or these are the factors which ultimately affect this PCR amplification or the DNA amplification. So, that was all about that how PCR amplify the DNA the various steps of the uh, polymerase chain reactions and
how we perform this polymer chain reaction practically and finally the factors which ultimately affect the polymerase chain reaction so that's all for today guys see you in the next video thank you very much